Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the conference call for Q3 FY24 HPL Electric hosted by Ilara Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mudit Kabra from Ilara Securities Private Limited. Thank you. And Thank you, Doshar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Ilara Securities, we welcome you all for the Q3 FY24 and 9 months FY24 earnings conference call of HPL Electric and Power Limited. I take this opportunity to welcome the management of HPL Electric and Power, represented by Mr. Gautam Seth, Joint Managing Director and CFO of the company. We will begin the call with a brief overview by the management, followed by Q&A session. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Seth for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. So thank you, Madhit. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to HPL Electric and Power Limited's Q3 and 9 months FI24 earnings call. I'm delighted to present to you our financial performance and our commitment to sustained growth and innovation as part of our active participation in, in India's energy and power sector transformation. In Q3 FI24 and the first nine months of the current year, HPL Electric has achieved significant milestones driven by our dedication to excellence and our strategic focus on diverse product segments. Our revenue from operations for nine months stood at 1,036 crores, reflecting a robust year-on-year -year growth of 15%. This growth was particularly notable in our metering and system segment, where revenue grew by 28% year-on-year to 216 crores in Q3, showcasing our strong market position and the increasing demand for advanced metering solutions. Similarly, in the consumer and industrial segment, revenue saw an increase of 13% year-on-year to 149 crores in Q3, underscoring our diverse portfolio with switchgear and wire and cables. We are facing a value erosion in pricing for the lighting segment, which we expect to stabilize in the current period. Our focus on operational efficiency and strategic investments has resulted in EBITDA growth for nine months, amounting to 137 crores, representing a year-on-year -year growth of 22%. This trajectory is further exemplified by our reported PAT for nine months, which stood at 30 crores, showcasing 57% growth year-on-year. -year. As India continues, is pursued towards becoming a global economic powerhouse. The importance of smart metering and modernizing the power sector cannot be overstated. We are proud to be at the forefront of this transformation, providing innovative solutions that not only meet the evolving needs of our customers, but also align with the government's vision for a sustainable and energy efficient future. Our proactive engagement with the government initiatives such as AMISP contracts under the RDSS scheme, has further strengthened our position as a trusted partner in the smart metering landscape. Through these initiatives, we have played a pivotal role in supplying smart metering solutions with cutting-edge communication infrastructure for various projects. Looking forward, we remain committed to value creation as we enter into a new chapter of growth of HPL Electric with a growing order book of 2,400 plus crores. Our investments in research and development, capacity expansion, and channel network expansion drive our readiness to participate in the emerging opportunities and fulfill the evolving needs of our customers. On this note, let us begin with the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. 
participants are requested to only use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Aman from Covered Investments. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. And thank you, Bhatan, sir, for enlightening us on HPL. So, my, I have three questions initially, and then I joined back in the queue. First, yes. sir, we are a prominent player in the low voltage market, which is a consumer facing brand. So, I just wanted to know our roadmap so that we can create our brand much more powerful so that it becomes. Much more uh, Aman, uh, Aman, your voice is not clear. No, your voice is not clear. Can you just repeat the question, please? Uh, yeah, I'll just repeat the question. Is it clear now, sir? Yeah, a little yeah. slowly, yeah, please. Yeah, perfect. Okay, sir. Sir, we are a prominent player in the low-voltage market, which is a consumer-facing brand, as everyone knows. Sir, I just wanted to understand our roadmap in just positioning ourselves as a much better brand in terms of brand recall and customer loyalty, so that we become in future, said five to five to ten years down the line, we become uh, a brand which every home wants to apply in their applications or electronic other things. So I just wanted to know how can our R and D also be a catalyst in this brand positioning and brand recall strategy of ours? Okay, sure. So uh, if you see our, uh, uh, you know, the consumer and industrial products, what we have, which are typically in the low voltage segment. Uh, you know, primarily we have switch gears where we cover the entire basket of products uh, required for any kind of installation, be it uh, residential, commercial, or any kind of industrial, or even uh, a little beyond the, the city infrastructure uh, installations. So, you know, uh, as a package, when we look at going to through the B2C uh, segment, going to the retail and to through our dealer and the channel partners, uh, we have a product basket of switch gears, we have uh, uh, MCB switches, then we have the wire and cables, uh, lighting, and uh, we are adding some more uh, products now, categories on the consumer side. So, uh, in a way, uh, our focus is that for any kind of installation, we need to be as a one-stop shop uh, in uh, for any kind of uh, requirements by the customers. So, our focus has always been uh, very deep because in every segment you see where HPL Electric is present, uh, we uh, like a control on the, uh, the the complete design, so we always have an R&D involved in this. Then we, we like to go into a well backward integrated production, what we have, and then the, that's how then we have the sales, marketing, and the servicing networks uh, aligned for each type of product. But when we approach the the channel and the uh, the, the trade. For that example, we then we like to leverage our uh, the cross selling between the products. So we go in as a basket. So if it's for a residential uh, owner, he gets in, or let's say even a builder who is doing it, he gets multiple products coming from a single uh, house uh, from HPL. So that is what uh, our, our focus has been. R and D is very uh, deep rooted in our uh, company because uh, you know like. Uh, you've heard so much about meters from us earlier where everything depends practically on the R&D, what is happening. Similarly, if you look at switchgear is one segment where we are very much deep-rooted into the R&D. Any kind of uh, 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 new products or new applications, whether in India or internationally, uh, HPL has been really working on that. So, so, uh, so, and similarly, it goes with the wire cable, with lighting, and now a couple of other products which are coming out. Okay, sir. So what I am getting is that you are focusing much on brand recognition and the brand to be much more uh, deep rooted into the Indian consumer as well. So yeah. yeah so, yes, sir. Uh, sir, so you see, uh, in the last couple of months, our uh, brand building exercises have also picked up, and uh, in terms of uh, uh, the the spend also that has gone up uh, post the. Uh, COVID lockdown, the, the two years post that, uh, our uh, advertising expenses and other things, the brand building expenses were uh, slightly on a lower side, I would say. But now since 
this year uh, we have started spending a lot again on doing a lot of activities uh, on the brand as a spend. percentage of sales if you can just quantify that as a revenue percentage of spending on advertisement and brand building i think if you look at the advertising and brand promotion uh, at least on on the last quarter what we are talking about it is about 1.5% on uh, the the overall uh, 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 you know revenue so so that that is it so the uh, the thing what we have because we have not been traditionally a very big uh, uh, you know ad spenders uh, you know we've been uh, we, we always believe that our product and technology does speak for itself but uh, since last couple of months we have uh, started a lot of activities on uh, uh, the brand and the consumer reach programs and including a lot on the trade side on the in the in the channel development okay. so that is how you see if you see our uh, retail network today at over 80000 has been growing and uh, about two and a half years back we kept a target of reaching 100000 uh, retailers and these are all registered retailers uh, what we are talking about so i think by mid of next year we expect to reach that figure so overall a lot has been happening on the the lv uh, switch gear on the consumer side and also on the brand of course backed by a very strong r&d and uh, development on the product side okay the second question i asked on the debt that our debt to equity ratio is around 2.2 is to 1 so in the future we have the visibility of revenues and also we have certain growth levels also so, so Aman, is, again, what uh, is the first ma'am sir am i am uh, audible now yeah, I, i think you're coming close to, very close to the mic where you're speaking thoda you can speak a little slow please yeah okay i'll speak a little slow so our debt to equity is 2 is to 1 I, if i'm not wrong you can just correct me So what with the future is uh, hello 0.77 sorry 0.77 okay 0.7 okay 0.77 currently okay okay sir then okay do we uh, okay when when we have such a what do you say revenue visibility and growth levels what is our first priority sir reducing the debt or do we see fy 25 26 there are much more opportunities lying ahead of us like rds is one of them multiple other opportunities are we exploring so that our cash can be invested there or are we our first priority will be reducing the debt what is your view on uh, the collections and their repayments just just wanted to understand so uh, you know the our debt equity as i said is uh, 0.77 so i would say uh, we are still at a comparable position though every time you know anything can be better there's no doubt in that our right now what we see front of us is a huge opportunity coming in each of our product segments smart meter and the rds scheme i think we have talked endlessly always on on that and that is one thing which is going to see from here also a, a tremendous increase in terms of the the business the enquiries which are floating and the actual uh, you know the the sales and the revenue and the margin growth what would happen apart from that uh, the infrastructure spending the housing revival of the housing uh, is also seen as a good factor right now within our uh, company and we are seeing a lot of traction lot of inquiries flowing in from that telecom also has been a good uh, uh, you know segment for us where we have been growing on multiple products uh, the recently announced the solar scheme what the government has been talking that again gives a huge opportunity so in a way whether it's from a from the government or government business coming in through the private contractors or through the private players and also the uh, the, the private business of uh, you know uh, the the housing and other things also coming in overall the opportunity is big so although we are very cautious on uh, you know we have an eye on the debt and other things but uh, for us the, the the top priority going forward what you are seeing it already in couple of quarters is that we will see a uh, again a jump in the revenue uh, improvement in the margins right from ebitda till pat and also the operational expenses being under control so automatically once a, a better cash flow a better uh, a margin uh, comes in i'm sure we will see a betterment of the ratios apart from that uh, like i've said in my earlier calls also uh, as a company we are definitely conscious on a lot of other balance sheet ratios which we are improving uh, you know i would say quarter on quarter basis also and uh, right from even the uh, return on capital employed or uh, even the other ratios what are there in the balance sheet we definitely look to have them improve going forward yeah okay so the last third question of this joint package is so what is our current capacity utilization on 
as a company as a overall and it's we are measuring it literally separately and that was will be fine what is our current capacity uh, you know since we uh, are talking about almost seven manufacturing plants so mm-hmm. it's sometimes difficult to give a ballpark figure but generally uh, the capacity utilizations are going up uh, what we have seen last year and or the year before that and uh, what we are seeing now the capacity utilizations are much better although we still have a headroom to grow uh, within that uh, in in meters especially uh, because we are seeing the peak demand uh, which will come next year will be very very high so although we have a sufficient capacity for that but still we will uh, we are already selectively enhancing the uh, capacities to to cater to the uh, let's say the boom or the big demand what would emerge out next year and uh, so we have uh, few months back we opened up the new electronic uh, production areas which were again augmented from the earlier ones also uh, recently we have just enhanced the injection molding and the the industrial plastic division in a bigger way, bigger way so a lot of machines are being added so in a way uh, while our capacity utilizations are good they are improving the order inflow is also coming at a fast rate but uh, going forward we do anticipate that an additional requirements would be there uh, looking at the uh, huge demand coming in next year. Thank you, sir. Just to follow up on this, recently in this uh, hello, country, we have. So, hello, Aman sir. Yes, Sorry sir. To, uh, interrupt. Uh, so can okay. you uh, come? Yeah, I just join the agenda. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Aman. Thanks. The next question is from the line of Dehya from Nivesh Investment Advisors. Please, please go ahead. Uh, hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hello, sir. I had this uh, doubt regarding the execution period. So, we have a very good uh, order book uh, of 2400 crores. And uh, what will be the execution period that we might be looking at right now? Yeah, typically, uh, any order which comes in uh, through the AMI SPs, they have, uh, let's say, an initial uh, period of about may- maybe a six months to even, can even go higher, but Generally, I would say six months before the supply start. This is just to prepare the, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, prepare the ecosystem just to receive the uh, smart meters. But uh, the the delivery periods are generally two and a half years. So, so definitely the orders which are coming in, you can say almost two and a half to three years is the supply period uh, for for these uh, for these orders. Okay. So the revenue will be split in. Uh, like uh, in a period of 2.5 to 3 years, right? From uh, uh, from right now. Yes. Uh, also, sir, uh, uh, in the uh, in the metering segment, uh, how much is the only meters that we are uh, so only the supplying part, and uh, what is the communication and the head end system uh, part of order order book? Well, so generally, if you see, uh, let's say out of the 2,400 crores, uh, roughly uh, a little more than 2,100 some crores are for the metering. And uh, for the meter supply only? For the, for the meters, yeah. And out of that, you can say almost 90% are the smart meter orders. So our, uh, you, you know, uh, we have stated it as our uh, very clear objective that we are into supply of smart meters to the AMI SPs and that is where our focus uh, lies. So if you, so we, we are not an AMISP, nor are we. Uh, so uh, although do we do have certain orders where we are doing value adds a little beyond the meters, just the the smart meters, but uh, still uh, bulk of it, I, I would say almost 95% plus or uh, almost 100% is the supply of meters. You know, so we are not into financing or not we we are not into the other parts. Though on the communication technologies. We are working on it where we will have a specific value add to our AMI customers along with the smart meters. So, if I understand this uh, scenario correctly, we are not uh, servicing the communication technology as of now, but uh, we are going to enter. Yes, we have, uh, like uh, last time, uh, you know, we we did, uh, we, we have a tie up with a uh, company and uh, as we are developing that, so those things will become value add as we go forward. Correct, sir. Very well, sir. Uh, also, sir, uh, uh, so which are the EMISPs that uh, currently we have uh, received orders from? 
if you could tell us so, your names normally uh, I, i will not name them but uh, you know frankly uh, all the big ones are uh, you know either already uh, either they are placed orders or they are buying from us or are under negotiation with us so i would okay. say we are catering to the majority of the ecosystem in terms of the uh, the amis we plan and if you recall you know the approvals what uh, these ami sp uh, people you know while getting pre rated before they uh, could uh, get the eligibility to take become an ami sp they had to do a uh, lot of testing uh, prior to that so many of the ami sps have done their qualifications based on our meters so that also gives us a advantage uh, while we are uh, doing business with them also sir i had this one last question uh so what are the percentage of orders that have uh, already been floated in the uh, floated by the uh, mis so the floated by the government and uh, converted into meters by the mis amis please no i think uh, you know this information are available on some websites because i also keep getting updated from uh, <laughs> the market in fact but i think the government is putting up these figures so probably you'll have to check up the websites and the, uh, you know to get those figures but i believe uh, i think over 10 crore uh, meters uh, orders have been given out to uh, the ami sps now uh, uh, for sure uh, you know all these orders have not gone to the meter manufacturers yet but because some are a lot are in negotiation and others but i think the process is on and uh, all these would be translated to orders to the meter manufacturers Yes, sir. So my question was, uh, how many of this uh, 10 crore uh, have already been passed on to the manufacturers? No, I, I, I'm sorry. I won't have the uh, industry data is not with, with us like this. But we do have sufficient idea. But uh, you, you will frankly have to check up their websites or uh, or get it out from them. Yes. Correct, sir. Correct. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, answering my question, sir. Uh, all the best for the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Viraj from Money Grow India. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, Mr. Sir. Uh, congratulations. Your future looks very bright for your company. Uh, and the question you. regarding the that was already asked on the debt situation. Given the company is growing so rapidly to service this market opportunity and working capital needs of the business will go up. Have you considered a, some kind of a primary raise or a rack issue to pay down debt? Because currently, as I see it, for the nine months, half of your EBITDA is eaten up by finance costs. Yeah. So, so you know, we have been, uh, uh, you know, there's nothing as yet what we have uh, on the table, but yes, we uh, do see a huge opportunity in the business, and uh, we are definitely thoughtful of the fact that. Uh, you know the uh, that the interest cost needs to come down especially looking at the huge opportunity what is there so we have been evaluating various options of uh, uh, how the uh, you know the how the debt can come down or how we we could have more funds for uh, uh, lo- looking at the growth uh, potential what is coming in so uh, i think nothing uh, nothing uh, what i can share right now or nothing as yet but definitely yes we are evaluating uh a lot of uh, options which are available and as and when we uh, have something specific i'm sure uh, you, you learn it from us or from the market definitely and this is my second question out of your 2400 crore order book how much is from the amis which are uh, sort of a two and a half year delivery and how much are shorter term delivery orders yeah so uh, out of uh, Let's say uh, over two thousand uh, one hundred and almost let's say two thousand one hundred and fifty crore orders, which are now in the on the metering side, you can say roughly ninety percent of that is ninety uh, yeah, percent of that is through AMISP. So eighty five to ninety percent. So the majority of them are all uh, you, you know the, the, through the AMISP, which are longer term orders. So roughly, if you see do the math, it's Almost maybe 1900 or 1950 crores, which are through the AMISP. Understood. So then, would it be sensible for me to assume a 20% growth by FY25, and then a 40% growth for the year after, as these AMISP orders kick in? So I think uh, the growth, uh, no, the, the 20% you said is for the next year or uh, yes. FY25, yes. 
next year. Next oh, year. I think, uh, no, you're, you're talking as a company or on the metering part? No, on the overall company, revenues, total revenues for the company. I think uh, the revenues, I would say, should be a little more than that because uh, the, the meter, uh, uh, you know, like I said in my earlier uh, answers also, the, the, the meter is going to see a certain peak in the mid of next year because right now uh, a lot of orders are coming, some from new AMI SPs. But maybe after six months or nine months, when their execution gets into at a peak level, the demand for meters will go up. And uh, when this will happen with many of the AMI SPs simultaneously, that is when the, uh, their demand would go up and, uh, you, you know, then our capacity utilizations can be, uh, you know, definitely increasing. So just to answer your question, uh, I would say the growth would be a little more than that. Uh, probably uh, I cannot just give a specific figure, but the uh, right now also the orders what we have, our focus is on execution because that is the key to the whole thing right now. And uh, while the execution is improving, uh, you know, uh, quarter on quarter, and I see that improving as we go forward, the order book is going to, uh, I, I would say, still a lot of inquiries are there, and the order book would again swell up from here. So that would happen, but then beyond that, then the execution would happen. So maybe end of the fourth quarter, we should be able to give a specific number of what we expect as a growth, but yes, it should be definitely north of the north of 20% here. Yeah. Thank you. Exciting years ahead for your company. All the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Pranav Shreemal from Pink Wealth Advisory. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I had a couple of questions. Uh, one being, uh, what would our capacity be to produce smart meters in terms of volume? No, sir. Can you repeat that, uh, please? Yeah. Yeah, am I audible, sir? Yes. Yeah, uh, what would our capacity be to produce smart meters in terms of volume? So we have been talking about, uh, I, I think the capacity in, in terms of number is almost 1 crore or to 1.1 crore meters per annum. And uh, so so right now, of course, we still have a headroom because uh, we, we are uh, maybe around 75%, 70-75% of our capacity. But still, in anticipation of that, we are already doing a lot of initiatives on automation. Uh, certain specific capacity enhancements have been done in the electronic side, in the plastic, uh, uh, industrial plastic side. So there are certain increases happening, but maybe, uh, you know, uh, maybe on the uh, second half of the next year, we should achieve these type of uh, capacities and then maybe even look up to grow beyond that. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. And one more question. Uh, what would our share be if uh, you are at the number, our share uh, in terms of total smart meters produced in India? No, you're talking about market share. Yeah? Yeah, market share, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's very difficult, I think, to say that because, uh, you, you know, right now the orders what we hear about are the the orders which are going to the AMI SPs. Now, uh, like we were just discussing, maybe the figure as per office, the, the website has, let's say about 10 crore orders which are given, but still maybe just half of them or even, I, I, I frankly don't have the number with me, they are right now being given in a stage, uh, stage manner to the meter manufacturers. So to determine the market share is frankly very difficult, even for us and I'm sure for anybody tracking the market, Right now, it would be a little difficult, but once, let's say after a couple of months, once most of these orders from the AMI SPs are passed on to the meter manufacturers, then probably a better understanding would happen. But I think uh, looking at the volumes and all, definitely, uh, I, I would say we are uh, one, of, one of the leaders in it, but exact figure, uh, frankly, too difficult to tell. Okay, thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Very helpful, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Ashwini Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I too had a, you know, I had a couple of questions. And uh, uh, what is our game plan to stay ahead with the AMISP contracts in this competitive environment? 
uh, you had mentioned focusing on private sector relationship. How can this benefit our? Yeah, so uh, you know the USP. What we offer to the A AMI SPs is the uh, you know the integration of the R and D, design, manufacturing, uh, and plus the vast experience of almost now uh, you know since '96. So we are talking about almost uh, you know 28 years of manufacturing electronic meters. So and we have supplied you know a couple of crores of meters with uh, uh, warranties lasting for five years, which were backed by bank guarantees. So the sheer experience, the, uh, the you know the, the kind of product what we have fully certified, fully approved, uh, backed by a very strong R and D. So I think that is something we bring on the table to a, a AMI SP. And when you look from a point of view of the AMI SP, the uh, you know the the kind of SLA uh, levels what they need to achieve, which is typically 98 and 99 percent. Again, uh, you know, backed by their payments coming in a period of 10 years. So definitely, uh, uh, I would say to mitigate their risk, they need to go to somebody who can provide them actually a meter which works for 10 years, backed by a very strong R&D. And I think that is what we offer uh, to the AMISP, plus our experience of working in this sector for a long time. So I think that is something uh, what would put us apart and give us an advantage over our competition, yeah. And I think, uh, you know, so that's the game plan. So the game plan is very simple, make a best, great, great product, uh, uh, you know, give it to the customers. And I think in managing relationships and managing contracts with longer uh, warranties, has some, uh, that, uh, you know, we, uh, HPL Electric does have that kind of experience. And I'd say that, I would say that is something which will help us to get more orders uh, in the near future and uh, look for a big growth going forward, yeah. Right. Uh, my next question is, uh, how could the recent election results uh, impacted our plans for rolling out uh, smart meters across the state? Also, does the national solar mission affect us uh, if, there, uh, if anything is there on that front? No, so you are talking about the, uh, the state elections? Uh, are, are you talking about that or what? The, yeah, so I, I think they were, uh, uh, you know, you know the, uh, I think the government's policy is driven by the center for the RDSs and uh, under which the the rollout of the smart meter is happening. So we, frankly, are not or uh, in any way concerned or, uh, you know, the business does not depend upon any uh, election results for that matter. And I think the government's perspective of reduction of the ATNC losses and uh, rolling out the smart meter is pretty long term and it is right now I believe it is accepted by almost all states which are right now either you know they are in a process of ordering or under you know some kind of tendering or already the contracts have been given out to the AMISCs. So I feel the, this business of uh, the, the smart meter is not exactly dependent upon any election results whether in the past or in the future. I think the government's policy is pretty long-term and very well defined. And I think it's also a need of the hour for the entire sector and the industry. So that is how it is. And when we look at, uh, you know, you, you, the national solar, uh, the mission, I think the new policy, you're talking about, I guess, the rooftop uh, policy, uh, which is there? Yes. So in that, you know, if you... Uh, yeah, we've already done a study because, you know, we, the government is talking about one crore, uh, uh, you know, uh, rooftop installations. And uh, we have a, a lot of products, whether they are net metering, whether they are solar cables, then there are cables in the other, you know, otherwise involved in the system. Uh, we have the, the DC breakers, the, the switch gear, uh, the junction boxes. So a lot of our products go into these type of installations, although these Installations are very basic and low-end installations because these are, uh, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in normal households, these are put in the rooftops. So, but overall, the share volume is very good. And uh, our preparedness uh, in terms of supplying to uh, this scheme is definitely there. So whether the, only the, the clarity needs to come on how the mechanism would be, you know, how the procurement should happen and how that would... I think in due course, I'm sure those also will be spelled out. 
and uh, so we are well prepared whether the government buys it centrally or in a diffused manner it is bought uh, uh, you, you know by uh, at the site uh, at the place where the installations happen so either way we have a large network and we can cater to this opportunity i think it's a very good thing what the government has done and definitely gives a uh, a big boost to a company like us right thank you so much uh, and all the best to the team thank you thank you ma'am Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Bhushan Sonar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, welcome. Uh, can you please uh, shed light on wires and cable segment? How are we seeing the growth there for wire and ampere cables? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, this segment uh, of wire and cable has been uh, seeing a good amount of growth uh, last year and as well as in the, the nine months of this year. Uh, we are, of course, looking at uh, a much bigger growth because traditionally we've been focused on uh, more on the domestic side, where uh, uh, where you have the domestic cables and the uh, uh, you know typically the residential uh, uh, installations happening. But off late since last couple of uh, months, and also thanks to the 5G uh, business, what we have been doing. We are now focused on a lot of other areas, uh, even infrastructure related and other things, where we see uh, a, a huge growth coming in in the next five to ten years. And I think overall, uh, you know, uh, uh, other than meters and switchgear, even wire and cable is going to be a segment within HPL where we see uh, a good amount of business picking up. So uh, we, we are right now in a process of uh, really. Uh, you know, putting in that kind of focus, and I'm sure in the next uh, one two years we will see a good amount of growth, not only in the B2C but also in the B2B segment, which are primarily the the private players who are catering to various uh, government schemes or uh, the infrastructure. Even the housing is seeing a good uh, uh, pickup. So, so that's where we see our uh, overall segment. We are also uh, uh, focused because. The focus what we have in technology and also on the, the R&D and the manufacturing, we see a good amount of speciality cable picking up internally. So that's also a, another added focus what will remain within the wire and cable segment. Okay. I'm having one more question regarding the lighting segment, uh, which has been showing value erosion for quite long. What's behind this and how does, a com as a company, you plan to change things around in probably quarter four? Yes, uh, you know, lighting has been seeing certain uh, value erosions, uh, primarily because, uh, you know, there has been a change in technology, a lot of, uh, you, you know, the way the uh, the manufacturing happens. We have seen a, uh, uh, you know, since the last almost over 12 months, we have seen a lot of cost erosion coming into that. And major of the cost uh, benefit what has come has been passed on to the consumers. So that has resulted in the the value, the unit values uh, coming down, the sales coming down because uh, you know even with the same quantity, the value of sales had come down. But uh, since last, I think two to three months, we are seeing certain stabilization. Uh, I would believe that maybe in this quarter or maybe early next quarter, the prices should be stabilized and again uh, certain volume and value growth to return uh, uh, go going forward. You know. Overall, uh, uh, you know, as uh, lighting, when we look at the LED lighting, I think the demand is intact. Uh, there is the amount of infrastructure, housing, the, the constructions which are going on. Every construction does require a, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, lighting requirements are there. <clears throat> so that is going to take care of, uh, you know, the demand is going to be there. This was, of course, an industry-wide phenomena where we did see certain corrections in or change in technology and then correction in prices. But along with, with during this time, in the last 12 months, we also find uh, a, a lot of unorganized market shifting to the uh, to the branded players. And I think this kind of a correction has happened. But going forward, maybe in the next year, we should see a, a good part of lighting growth coming back uh, overall in the industry, and that that should really help uh, overall uh, for us also, and for the industry also. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Thank you. Thank you. 
And the next question is from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Hello, Vignesh, sir. You can ask the question. Hello, Vignesh, sir. The line, the line for the current participant seems to have disconnected. The next question is from the line of Rahul Kothari from Girit Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Gautamji. First of all, congrats for a good set of numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. And, uh, sir, I wanted to understand two things. Uh, one is on the uh, order size. Can you provide the number of meters, uh, order in number of meters that we have? No, normally, uh, no, I, I, no, for the smart meters you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, normally, uh, no, we would not do that uh, for more of competitive reasons. But okay. uh, uh, but the values are all, always given out as and when the orders are coming, but uh, uh, not the quantity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, can you uh, provide some guidance on the uh, what sort of internal estimate or internal aspiration is on the market share front? Thank you. I, to you. I, I think uh, if you look at uh, past over one decade, you know, uh, HPL Electric has been having a market share of about 22 to 20. 5% in the energy uh, uh, meter market. And I would say going forward as we are, uh, uh, you know, we would definitely look at maintaining and then growing that market share. But right now, as I said in my previous answer, it is not very easy to determine the market share initially. But as and when most of the orders from the AMI SP uh, are given out to the meter manufacturer and once the that's it. That settles down. I'm sure the market shares will be clear, but definitely we are uh, very aggressive. We are seeing a good, uh, you know, growth coming in. Even though orders, what we have currently are, uh, I would say it's still, uh, it's still is, you know, a good starting point, you know. Uh, but there are a lot of inquiries right now going on, and uh, the next one year again, we do expect, uh, although the execution is going to be strong every quarter. But probably the order input can really go up from here. You know, it can even you know grow by 50 percent, even 100 percent. That is how the, uh, the 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 market is. The potential of the market is there, and definitely it's for us to catch. I'm sure we are well prepared, but still, uh, definitely a lot of work needs to be done. And uh, one more thing to understand is like uh, of the 25 crore smart meters, I understand almost around 10 to 12 crore meters. Uh, either tenders are released or orders have been, or AMSP has secured the orders. And uh, I think in a uh, couple of months, they would be uh, proceeding towards uh, releasing the orders to the meter manufacturers. Exactly. Uh, and uh, and apart from that, uh, the remaining uh, uh, orders of uh, balance 25 crore meters, around 10, 12 crores, is it uh, visible that the balance orders are also expected to be released from government or uh, but this comes to uh, AMISPs uh, in the uh, FI25 itself? Uh, I think so, because uh, what I hear, like you talked about this 10 crore plus meters, uh, what we hear, and generally I think it is there on the website, is that uh, if 10 crores is done, I think there are almost 17 to 18 crore meters which are under evaluation or already tendered but not given out, you know, something like that. So. I think the overall figure is moving towards the 25 uh, crore meters. So uh, I, I think we are still in, uh, uh, you, you know, February of 2024. So by the time I think we, when we move still in the next 14 months, I'm sure uh, these all would be given out. This is what I, I would believe so. Okay, interesting, interesting. And uh, okay, that's it from my end. Thank you. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Raoul. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Sri Harsha. Please go ahead. Uh, afternoon, sir. Uh, this is with regard to uh, the smart metering uh, uh, capacity expansion. Now, uh, so for, the, for HPL 
electric uh, the install capacity is uh, we, we come to one crore meters per annum and for uh, our competitor uh, genus power is also it is around uh, 1.1 crore smart meters per annum but uh, uh, the requirement uh, of the government coming to around 25 crore meters for a period of 3 years so how do we meet the shortfall yeah so uh, you know uh, just, just i want to clarify you know the the requirements what are coming out are uh, you know eventually going to go beyond the 3 years because it's already uh, almost one and a half years we've been talking about it still uh, as per the official websites about only 10 crores have been ordered there has to be more ordering which will happen which probably will take some more time and then there is a two and a half year period two three year period which will be for installation so while we are talking about this i i i would just say on behalf of the industry and as on hcl also the capacity for a smart meter within india is fairly sufficient you know and uh, definitely uh, if we look at let's say about 25 to 30 percent market share we ourselves would be targeting anywhere between you know let's say five and a half to seven and a half crore meters which is possible in the next looking at a period of let's say about four to five years our uh, right now the capacity is what we have we are nearing you know maybe by next year we would reach a full capacity but that's still on a theoretical side as we uh, look at you know uh, various uh, Uh, you know the the kind of automation uh, initiatives we are taking within the same capacity the uh, the values can be enhanced matlab the the quantities within the same setup can be enhanced uh, a good amount of percentage on that plus then we have uh, you know some more specific uh, capacity enhancements happening so overall i would say in the next 2 to 3 years this figure of let's say we are talking about 1 crore and 1.1 crore whatever is there these figures will also go up and uh, i think only the two three top players also can probably cater to 60 70% plus on the uh, capacity side so i think that is not a you know when we look at the overall opportunity uh, although capacity expansion is happening on a specific basis but that's not probably a very big cause of concern when we look at the the business opportunity going forward so the only only i, I don't see it happening overall in the three year period what was initially uh, anticipated but it's a huge change in terms of involving a lot of uh, utilities involving a lot of people the whole mindset changes there and so these things do take a lot of time for implementation there are softwares involved there are a lot of other things which need to work so i think this is something of a very big opportunity for us and a very good thing for the uh, you know the indian consumers and overall for the economy that a, a complete system is getting enhanced and uh, really uh, changed for the better yeah and thereafter uh, you know we would see a new a uh, lot of new things happening and definitely the uh, the the aim of government to cut the atnc losses uh, would start triggering in a big way once the entire system or even a majority part of it gets rolled out yeah so i think uh, from a capacity point uh, it's, it's not a big worry you know from for anybody rather okay sir thank you sir and all the best for your future thank you sir thank you thank you and the next question is from the line of janish shah an individual investor please go ahead yeah thank you uh, and congratulations on the good set of numbers that you uh, delivered uh, there are two questions i have one when you're saying the current capacity utilization is around 70 75% in meters and the given the orders that you have uh, which are going to get delivered probably uh, from i mean the, the deliveries will obviously improve quarter on quarter but the peak deliveries probably will start happening in the next year somewhere today you are making a ebit margins of plus close to 15% in the segment how much is the headroom available for you to improve upon the margins given the orders which you have right now and uh, uh, the operation uh, operating leverage which you can uh, derive from the existing operations that is one question and the second is on i mean uh, last year you have already been speaking, speaking about the improvement in the working capital cycles when 
uh, the uh, supplies to AMISPs will start. Uh, do we see that possibility or like when do we see that uh, the capital or basically the debtor days or the working capital requirement in the business uh, streamlining uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the next year? Uh, thank you. Yeah. So regarding the margins, uh, you know, if you see this, this quarter, what we are talking about, the EBIT margins on meter has improved. I think it's about 15 point some percent, uh, which, and overall in the nine months is about 14.85. So we uh, definitely there is certain scope for improvement in the margins, uh, and uh, we are seeing it. So there are going to be two things. The meter margin is going to be much better, no doubt, as compared to the other one, barring the switch gears. The other, the meter margin is going to be good, plus the share of meter, at least in the next one to two years, is going to go up within our own uh, uh, you know, basket of products, although the consumer and industrial is also set to grow. But uh, you also have to realize that what the, the the orders, what we are taking, the prices are going to be fixed for about two and a half years. So although right now the commodities, at least in the last couple of months, have been very stable, I would say, right from copper to the industrial plastics and everything. But looking at, you know, any eventuality, what can happen in the two, two and a half years, Definitely, there is certain part other than the ICs or some critical components where the prices can be locked in. Balance remains open to be procured at the time when the deliveries would happen. So, but yes, uh, to just put your uh, uh, to give a simple answer to your question, it would be yes, there is a headroom for growth. Maybe I cannot quantify it, but uh, the meter and systems uh, as more AMISP orders are getting executed and if the cost levels remain at this level, definitely uh, we would see the EBIT margin improve and overall the share of EBITDA in the company also to improve because the meter would definitely be contributing almost 65 to maybe a little higher percentage on the revenue front. Now, when we look at the, uh, uh, on the working capital, uh, this thing, the, uh, uh, on the, when we look at the overall business, the payments from the AMI SPs definitely should be much better than uh, getting the payments uh, from the uh, from the utilities because they are uh, the uh, the negotiated uh, period of credits are uh, a little lower as compared to uh, what we find in uh, with the utilities. But as more and more business is happening, I'm sure we should see an improvement initially because there is going to be a ramp up of. Uh, uh, the orders, the production is improving, is really increasing. So therefore, uh, certain fund requirements have been there on an interim basis, and that's what we said even last time that uh, the borrowings uh, on an interim basis will go up. But eventually, uh, as uh, a, a huge amount of business happens on uh, from the AMISC, the working capital requirements should come down. Uh, that is for sure. Could we get a clear understanding about what would be the uh, receivables uh, days or the credit period you are extending to the EMISPs? You know, these are again, uh, uh, you know, these are specific negotiations based on the rates, based on uh, who the EMISP is. But generally, I would say uh, they are much better. Maybe 60, 90 days is something what is happening. Uh, some of them working even on LCs. But as as more and more volumes come in, certain competition also increases. So they would be, you know, looking at the reliability of the AMISPs, which obviously is there because they are very large, uh, typical big companies. So uh, that would be there. But either way, if you look at from a uh, uh, what the traditional utilities were giving in, let's say, six to seven months, definitely we are talking about a half a period, you know. That, that is something that should improve, you yeah. know. Yeah, okay. That gives a fair understanding of the situation. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sorry, the line uh, was not clear. It got disconnected earlier. Uh, so my question... Uh, it's a line of, uh, I missed the initial commentary. Can you tell me uh, when, when, uh, what is the timeline over which we are going to execute this order book of 2400 crores? Yeah, this would be done in, uh, uh, 
uh, since the bulk of it uh, is, uh, you know, the smart meter orders, so that would be done in about uh, two and a half years. So, so broadly two and a half to three years is where these orders would be executed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, on the smart meter side, right? And uh, apart from smart meter. Apart from that, roughly, I don't have the exact figure, but maybe we are talking about another three, let's say three, four hundred crores. That would happen in the next six to uh, six to nine months. Generally, the, those are some of the traditional uh, electronic meter orders, which generally have a period of about six to nine months for execution and closure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Noted. Uh, sir, uh, now more on the financial situation part of it. Uh, just wanted to understand how uh, tax rate is a tad bit higher than what it is uh, for other companies. I mean, we used to pay around 27, 28, 25 percent. For the last two years, yes, the tax rate is higher. So, can you let uh, I mean explain as, as to what why the tax rate is so high? No, but I think that's. Uh Typically, as per the income tax uh, rate, but uh, I can just uh, have it checked up uh, vis-a-vis other people. But I think it's a normal thing with the uh, – since, you know, we uh, – I, I, it's just my guess that uh, in the last two to three years, our, our CapEx has been just more of a maintenance CapEx. So that's why you see a drop in the depreciation. And uh, so, so probably the differential depre- depreciation of the companies to income tax – Probably the gap is closed down, but that's it. But let me just, uh, you know, run it with my people and see uh, what, what the difference is. If anything uh, is there, we can revert back to you on this. But, uh, but well, generally, I mean, I usually uh, people have switched to the 25% tax rate that the government offers, 20 to 0.5 uh, plus 10%, if I'm not wrong. That is the tax rate uh, that people have switched to. So, but uh, since last seven, eight quarters, we are paying around 35%. So, basically, the PAT looks a bit lower. So, just to get that, that's why I wanted to get an idea and also wanted to know, because uh, you have a chance to switch to a new tax regime uh, be- uh, after the financial year closes. That is in April, if I'm not wrong. So, I just wanted to know. No, I think what I understand is that we have uh, certain MAT credits which are there. So, that's why we are in the old scheme because... Uh, uh, together, you know, when you look at with the yeah. math credit and uh, the, okay. uh, the the rates, uh, that, that is much more beneficial for us. So, but still, okay, uh, point, point taken, let me just uh, uh, review it once. But I think uh, the thing is that we need to use the math credit and overall it okay. makes a much more b- beneficial uh, uh, thing for us. Okay, uh, so any idea uh, over what amount of time would the math credit get utilized? I think overall it is 10 years, but uh, I, I think the, we need to see the residual part. So let, let me, we can, uh, I can probably just have this reviewed, yeah. Okay, okay, fine. Not an issue. That's all from my side and all the rest. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you everyone for your participation today and being part of HPL's uh, growth story. Uh, you know, uh, please feel f- free to connect with uh, Dickinson or uh, uh, for any of your questions or insights. And have a pleasant evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Ilara Securities Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines.